All right, guys, welcome back. 11 May. All right, 11 May 2024. Today's video, Bitcoin. It is about to go. It is about to go up. That is my guess. That is my intuition based on past performance, historical data, and greed and fear index, and sediment, which is pretty much the greed and fear index. Do you believe me or don't you believe me? What do you think? Uh, do you think Bitcoin is just going to tank or do you think it's going to go up? It's been, uh, well, let's read this heading, this headline here. We are now at Bitcoin. It hit 60 earlier. Now it's at 61,105. It's been doing this little just flat line across the board for weeks now. It kind of took a little correction of 5% down to 60, went back up to 63 back down to 60 for no reason at all. It just goes up, it goes down, but now it's going kind of sideways with no big swings. So let's look at this article. This is from Coindesk. Uh, my advice, if you see anything from Seeking Alpha, Morningstar, all those, uh, what do you call it, um, legacy media, ignore them, Squawk Box, NBC, they're all propaganda. They'll steer the wrong way. Read stuff that is Crypto related, crypto centric, daily hodl, coin desk, all that stuff. I think you'll get more, uh, what do you call it, experienced information, people with their hands in, in on the stuff who deal with it daily, not just what people are told to say. So, anyway, we got it. We got it, guys. I think we've been consolidating for a while now. It's, it's going to be what? Usually, April is slow because of taxes, government taking all your money and giving it to other people overseas uh, to pay their pensions while we are falling apart infrastructure-wise and bridges and uh, societal decay with homeless and all that crap. It's sad. It's really sad. But anyway, April is a bad month because of that. Uh, let's see. May is kind of uh, hover mode, hibernate mode. What do we do now? Let's recoup. And usually, typically, um, we had the Fed come out, what, a week or so ago? And those guys, man, I, I got to get the calendar up. And if you use um, TradingView, they actually have the schedule of events of when these damn government fools like the Fed and Yellen and all these, all, these, um, all these people that have no idea what to do. They're like art majors from liberal art schools in finance. Go look up. Uh, who's that guy? Obama? Obama? Who's the guy? Who's running this country now? His regime. Go look him up. His uh, economic advisor and look at the recent interview. He couldn't explain how money works in this system. Like if the government can print money, why do we have a debt and why do we have to borrow it? it and he just had no idea. And you can tell you, then they showed his, uh, his history. He's a liberal arts major in music and he just got appointed that job. Oh my God, whatever happened to hiring someone based on merit. But anyway, let's get back to it. So Bitcoin's been Hovering, 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 hovering around the 60 to 63 range. So let's go through it. They're saying it is in, it's in a bore you to death phase. Uh, but they always put the butt in. Why don't they just come out and commit to it? This is for entertainment, folks. I'm going to say this, but it's for entertainment. That's why I do these videos, just for fun, to vent some steam and then post some videos. I do not get any compensation from those uh, San, San Bruno, California YouTubers who run that show, the DEI guys. I don't get any money from them at all. They make money off my videos. Anyway, I believe it's gonna go up. These fools won't commit to it. Even though I like Coindesk, just come out and say, hey, Bitcoin will go up. You know, <laughs> it's just been consolidating for so long. Uh, Bitcoin is in a bore you to death phase, but Bitcoin could be close. Close to what? Wait, could be close, analysts say. That's a terrible heading. I actually reread it could be close. Close to what? Oh my God. See, that's why you almost have to read things twice. I tend to scan the headlines like any idiot. And then I went back and now since the third time went, it makes no sense. All right. This period could last between one to six months. I think my hunch is end of May, we're going to start seeing movement upward. Uh, also with the equities, because with the equities, you have Apple and all these companies buying back their own stock just to increase their numbers because they know the sales aren't there. So they're going to increase their numbers from one last quarter to keep the stock afloat because we're in an election year. Look at the past historical data on election year. Data doesn't lie unless you're the government that munges the data and manipulates it to push a narrative. That's the only time data lies, but it's really the people lying. 
uh, now we have AI coming out and p being morally, uh, more ad morally, <laughs> being adopted more as the uh, trend analysis of what's going to happen. And you kind of now find that with this AI, you can't put in your ideology, your narratives, your lies and stuff like that. You know, they don't, they want you to buy, 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 and then the market's going to be crashed you know, on purpose and you're gonna be left holding the bag down 40% in your 401ks, uh, holding your, I'm already down 40% in Tesla, so I'm stupid there. That just shows you never listen to anybody on YouTube. I should have dumped after I took a 10% hit. I didn't, I'm dumb, I admit it. <laughs> Cause I believe Tesla was more than a car company. I don't know, man. Lesson learned. Uh, let's go. Yeah, so we're in a consolidation phase. You can see the chart right here. 66, 78. Right now we're at 61. So pretty much the same range. Uh, let's see. It's been sliding since reaching the all-time high, which is obvious. It went up and now it's kind of did the pullback. And I'll give those guys credit at tradinggenius.com. I don't know who they are, uh, their histories and that, but they've been nailing this right on. And they said there's going to go up. We'll have a pullback a consolidation phase. And I think that's what we're in now. It may pull back a little bit. We even dipped Oh my God, I think we dipped in the high 50s a week or two ago. Uh, yeah, so, and that's what they called too, and I'm amazed that they knew that. So I think we're uh, basically uh, hovering mode, you know, like they said, bore you to death mode without a rest of a meaningful title. <laughs> and then we'll see ETFs and all that stuff. I think money has slowed down a bit going into it. And let's see, the law could continue into early summer. I don't believe that. I think end of May and June, barring any of these damn government people or Fed people coming out and screwing things up. They come out and uh, they make their little press release. Then they do a presser <coughs> where they come out and speak and they speak in um, word salad, which makes no sense. And that's all by design because they know most people don't care. And uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It's just sad. I wish more people were involved and had more critical thinking skills and could say, whoa, whoa, what exactly are you saying? Like lawyers do, they keep pressing you. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, you said this, but what does that mean? You really mean to say that? And that's what people need to start doing. And they most likely don't. I'd say most of the time they do not push people on what they say. All right, the law. I think the law is going to end in May, a couple weeks, and then we're going to start seeing the move upward. Uh, BlackRock keeps buying Bitcoin through their ETS, Fidelity, Vanguard, all these guys. Uh, let's see, crypto markets are stuck in a law with digital assets consolidating. Oh, they use my word for the last few weeks, testing investors' conviction whether the bull market will resume. Yeah, I'm sure some of these legacy guys, these old timers who don't want to hold Bitcoin outright, put a lot of money in the ETFs, and now they're going, they're calling their buddy up at BlackRock, going, "Hey, we're trying to take over the world here." Uh, why isn't my Bitcoin ETF going up, Samuel? And Samuel goes, hold on, Bubba. We'll get it there. Just hold on. And uh, that's what's going on behind the scenes because it is a big club, guys, and we ain't in it. So just remember that. The best we can do is get breadcrumbs. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is saying rally. That's bull crap. All right. Blockchain activity also points to low participation with transactions on the Bitcoin network falling off a cliff. And the second largest, I don't care about Ether. I don't care about Ether. I, I don't even want to talk about Ethereum anymore. I'm so tired of it. After mining it for years, I'm sick of it. Uh, and everyone's always hoping I'm on Ethereum. Just buy Bitcoin, guys. We have been here before, blah, blah, blah. The, cur the current period, so here's my historical comment. The current, yeah, I cannot speak English hard. The current period resembles the action from April through September of 2023 when Bitcoin was stuck in the same range. It was. And then people forget about it. And then uh, you kind of go about your daily business. And I started noticing, oh, my God, it's starting to inch up. I started to buy back in around the 25 thing. Boom. Now look where we're at. You know, come on. Up 60, 70 percent. Not too shabby. Yep, yep, yep. And that's about the time also the pre-ETF days in early January. Then the ETFs got approved and then everything kind of tanked a little bit for a couple weeks, and then it took off. It takes a while to consolidate. The money's got to flow. The accounting's got to get done. The algorithm's got to get triggered on certain trigger points and blah, blah, blah. You know, that type of thing. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin is in a bore you to death phase. Charles Edward, founder of the crypto hedge fund, Caprio Investment said. All right, go Charles. So let's see. 
It, there, he's saying this could be the last one in six months. I, again, I don't. I think it's gonna last till June. It's gonna start going up. That is my statement. I could be wrong, but I'm going with it, Big Daddies. I'm sticking to it. I'm I'm putting my I'm putting my name out there. I think end of May, early June, it's gonna start going up. There. What other YouTuber can say that? Again, this is entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I have to say that because some idiot will actually listen to my advice. You know, it's all a game, guys. You can lose everything. You can buy Tesla like me and lose everything. You know, you can go buy Nvidia and lose everything or make some money. You also got to know when to sell. You got to know when to take profits and look at look at the psychology of when to take profits. There is a high whole psychoanalysis on Investopedia on what the psychology is of when to take profits. People don't. They get stuck in, oh my God, it's going up, it's going to the moon. And then it corrects the next day and they lost everything. And they bitch about the money they lost. If you have it in your pocket, a bird in the hand, just freaking take the win, you know? And then buy back in when it corrects. Boom, boom, boom. That is the beauty of volatility, I learned. The volatility is a good thing because if you know you're up, say you're up 10, 15%, that's a nice little profit. Cha-ching. Boom. You know, in a week or two or a month, it's going to crash. Boom. Buy back in. Going to go back up, you know? Boom, boom, boom. All right. Traders are showing weak by the dip interest. All right. Good for them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's. I think we're losing interest. The fear and greed index. Uh, I can't. It's just a lack of interest right now because it's been going sideways, which I like. Less hype on it, less news. Uh, that's good. Things can kind of chill out for a bit, getting ready to launch up north. I think north. We're going to go north to 70,000. That is my prediction. I'm not saying maybe, if, or but. I just think it's going to go. I have a gut feeling. Of course, I could be wrong, but I'm saying it's going to go up. That's my gut. If it wasn't, I'd be dumping everything right now, but I'm not. So let's see. And again, I told you the different ways you can get into crypto. Let's go through it real quick. Buy Bitcoin direct, put it in your wallet, get it off the exchanges ASAP. If you leave it on the exchanges like Voyager, the old Voyager, remember that BlockFi, uh, any of these other ones too, you will lose it. They will go under and you will lose your money in crypto and never get it back because you're a little guy. They're a big guy. <laughs> you know, haha, <laughs> they ate your Bitcoin. Uh, second way is you can buy ETFs. That is easy in and easy out. You buy the ETF. It kind of trails slightly behind the Bitcoin chain. So you do have kind of an indicator. Oh my God, Bitcoin's tanking. And if you're during trading hours, you can dump your ETF then. Oh my God, Bitcoin just corrected. Get the hell out of my ETF. The only problem is you can only trade your ETFs during normal trading hours. And that's the bad thing about ETFs. And the third way also, another bad thing and good thing is buy the, the Bitcoin miners that have survived the having a Bitcoin. Now the fees have dropped, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if the rewards have dropped. So only the best optimized Bitcoin miners will survive. And uh, Wolf is one of them, WLF. Let's show you that, Big Daddies. Oh, where is it? Oh my God. Where did I put it? Wolf, it's down. I'm, I'm about up 5%. I was up a lot, but I was focused on Tesla at the time and I missed my chance to dump. I should have set my sell on Wolf to make 15% and I missed it. So don't spread yourselves too thin because otherwise you'll be like me bitching about the money you, you could have had. Yeah, so you can buy Bitcoin miners. That's another way. Uh, and then one other way is Misty or Coiny. This is through a thing called Yield Max and they, uh, they are buying options on uh, <clears throat> these companies. So this is Coinbase and this is that, oh, I forgot that. Morning, not morning star. Oh man, I'm drawing a blank. I always do that. I can never remember this guy's company. It's the guy that's buying all the Bitcoin up. He has all the thing. Just look it up, MSTY. I'm sorry. I thought it would pop up right here. You know what? Yeah, yeah you guys gotta look it up. I don't have time. <laughs> but those are, that's, an, that's another way to buy into it. They're high risk because they're buying the options on Coinbase and the, not morning star. It's the, got it. I'll think of it one day. Um, all right, we're so we're back in Bitcoin. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's really anything else in here other than the pattern of historical data, the uh, consolidation phase, uh, the bore you to death phase. People are just kind of lost interest right now, which is fine by me because it's getting ready to shoot up. Big daddies, woo! Uh, sustain, yeah. We believe sustained strength and a reclaim of, of range lows on Bitcoin post FOMC and job market data 
and the stimulus weakness in the dollar is a sign of a new regime. Uh, I hate that word, but anyway, which would set up, uh, uh, set us up for a very bullish Q3, Q4 for Bitcoin. I believe that. I am on page with that sentiment. Uh, the Fed has a meeting mid-August in their favorite little getaway, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. They totally ruined that area by bringing all the billions in there and they pushed out the normal nice people from Jackson Hole a County, the area, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And they pushed them out. They have to now drive an hour just to get to work in Jackson Hole over the mountains, over the treacherous mountains in the winter, the snow, the ice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's their little haven right now. And I think I blame Harrison Ford because he started it. He had a ranch out there. And then all the, you know, he's a millionaire. But then you got billionaires who came out and uh, built their big, big mansions and that and kind of destroyed the area. Uh, but that's their secret hideaway. They might have bunkers inside the mountain in the Grand Tetons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I think we're going to see it go up. And then once we're kind of near this election, you, I know, prepare to buckle up for that, guys. If you don't have a, your food supplies, your water supplies, your ammo supplies, because it's going to get crazy. Uh, the lefties will probably unleash their, uh, their hordes of paid minions. Uh, who are those guys? The uh, BLM Antifa squad and now the guys that are acting like they're student protesters. They're all paid. Come on. They found out they're all paid. They all have the same tents. They all have the same signs. It's, it's such a joke. But they'll unleash these useful idiots. And look up the term useful idiot. It was used back by Stalin in Russia. He used it to take over using communism in Russia. And he called them the useful idiots. Uh, once you know, 30 percent of the population are useful idiots. And uh, once they're done with you, they expose of the useful idiot. Uh, look up the history, man. Uh, people do not change. Human nature does not change for thousands of years. It's just technology changes, but people are still the same. It's, you know, what does it say? History doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. And I think that's Mark Twain. Uh, but look at history, guys. You'll learn a lot. You'll see what's happening. What is happening now has happened before. Uh, yeah, just different players in the game. So take that for what it is. But I think we're going to see this shoot up. And like I said, going to the election and then all, all hell's going to break loose. But if you, like I said, look at the psychology of profits, even on your equities, uh, not a bad time. If you're making some money as we get closer to uh, middle of August, I was, uh, cash is your friend, man. Do not be afraid to go to cash. You can get 5% in a money market. And that's better than me down like me on Tesla, 40%. Uh, I don't know what to do with that thing. I'm debating. Do I hit the, eat the loss? Because I think the economy is going to collapse. And then 40% 40, 40 may become 80%. A Bitcoin, I was down 80% once, but I held in there making no dividends or anything. It was just a, it's just a, it was just a hobby at the time. But now it's, a, it's hopium <laughs> that maybe this, uh, my faith is in it that it will go up. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, then I'm an idiot, right? I'm another, I'm one of those useful idiots, the Bitcoin people. But when I see BlackRock buying all this Bitcoin, even the McPoliticians who know inside information, are buying the Bitcoin. Uh, so I tend to believe them because, you know, criminals know how to make money. So why not follow them, right? Follow their suit and get some of the breadcrumbs. And on that note, what do you guys think? Is Bitcoin going to go up or is it going to go down? And we got 18 minutes of Bitcoin talk. Woo! Oh my God. Anyway, that's what I was just looking at this today. I'm going, I agree with finally an article. We're in consolidation phase and, uh, you know, it goes up a little bit, a couple percent and it comes shoot, you know, shoots back down to 60 goes back up to like here look at this this little consolidation phase right in here uh what if i can zoom in why can't i zoom in apple do better oh wait let's do let's do one month yeah there's there was that low right 58 57 boom 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 now we kind of been doing the same oh a little spike now we're back here consolidating and then we're definitely, I think, going to get back up the all-time high at least and more. That's my guess. That's my plan. And I'm sticking to it. And I just got to get ready uh, to not get greedy and maybe just take some profits if I can. Uh, yeah. All right. On that note, go forward to great things. Uh, just focus on Bitcoin. I mean, I see all this stuff about Ethereum and all coins. Like, all right. If you want to play that game, I've been there, done that. Yeah. I'm not, not doing that anymore. All right. Thanks for watching. Boom.